are you guys doing? Feeding the goat. Getting the goat ready to calibrate. Okay, so let's go. Hello, my name is Brian Pickworth. I'm with the City of Farmington Hills, Michigan, DPW. To my right is Jeff Strong from Bosch Rexroth Corporation. And to my left is Michael Delph, also with the City of Farmington Hills, Michigan. Today, we're gonna to show you how to do a granular calibration with a Rexroth CS550 controller. Okay, so to start, you definitely wanna be safe. Safety's number one. Check out your truck thoroughly, chalk your wheels for safety, and always wear your personal protective equipment, safety glasses, gloves, and do a thorough walkthrough of your truck and your equipment to make sure you're ready to start calibrating. So the next step in the granular calibration process would be you need a few tools. Um, you could simply use a, a hunting scale with a five gallon bucket, a human scale with a five gallon bucket, or you can drop the salt on a tarp, shovel it in to a bucket and do that. It's a little, it takes a little bit more longer time to do that and accomplish that, but it's still at the, at the, at the end of the day to get a proper weight to enter it back into the controller, it still accomplishes the same thing. To reiterate, a simple human scale will work. We went in and co-purchased the city of Wixom, Michigan on a little more fancier, bigger hopper electronic scale. It'll take the whole calibration drop in one load and it simplifies and makes everything a lot more efficient. We can probably do 10 or 12 trucks in a matter of an hour, hour and a half, whereas if you were using the old manual way with a tarp, the human scale it would take you a lot longer than that. So the next step, have the operator get into the cab of the truck, start it up, let the truck warm up for a few minutes, get up to normal operating temperature, set the RPMs to 1,000, then he could start going through the procedures on the CS550 controller. I am Jeff Strong with Bosch Rexroth. Today we're going to be doing a complete calibration for granular material using the Rexroth CS550 spreader control. Once the control is turned on, we need to use a programming key to get into program mode. Put the USB stick into the USB port either on the front or the bottom of the display. Once it is in, we have a lock here that we touch to get into program mode. It takes a few seconds for it to boot up. Once in program mode, it gives us our main menu. The first menu we want to go to is the hydraulic valve for the calibration process. Once you're here, we have tabs going across the top so you can fine tune or calibrate any of the functions, but the one we're gonna work on today is the conveyor. First thing we need to look at is that we're in auto mode because our conveyor is equipped with an auger feedback sensor. And also that sensor gives us 100 pulses per revolution. So the first thing we're gonna do is an auto null. What we're looking for is our minimum and maximum operating window. We have an auto null button down here on the bottom. Once the truck is running and up to about 1,000 RPM, you just press your auto null. It's going to tell you to wait a few seconds. It will ramp the auger up, find its high spot. Then it'll slow the auger down, find its low spot. One feature I like to do after we do our auto null is just go to our minimum. And by touching on it, we bring up two arrows. Just verify we are at our minimum. Right now it's showing us 17, 18 RPM. We can null it down a little bit using our down arrow.
I like to get that number down where it's bouncing between one and two as our minimum speed. That way we verify we're right on the bottom end of that valve. When you're all done, you can press minimum and end it. So now it has reset our numbers to 42.2 and 73.5. That is representative of the operating window of the valve section. Once that is completed, it's set up your minimum and maximum for you. Then you're able to proceed and do the calibrate portion of the uh, setup. Anytime you're doing any changes on the computer here, doing an all in all, calibrate, catch test, when you're done with your numbers, you're set in, you always have to go out the door to save it. If you don't do that, you'll lose your numbers and everything and it won't be the same. To do the calibrate portion, you have a calibrate button. You need to have your material ready to go. You're going to start discharging material shortly after we press the button. You'll have to have your tarp ready or a scale ready to collect the material. One real important thing to remember is when you're setting your gate on a live bottom, V-box, sander, Make sure whatever you set your gate out for calibration, which we set ours at for five before we calibrate it for our salt, make sure you take that number and input it into the controller head for proper calibration. Okay, on your gate, when you have that set to how many inches you want, say it's five inches, you gotta make sure that you change it on the computer and all you have to do is go over here to the gate, push on the number, take those number out, it was that 25, which is, we're putting it at five. Hit the broken arrow, thin arrow, and you're set, and then go out the door to save everything. Press your calibrate button. The first time it just tells you to make sure everything's ready to go. Touch it again. It'll skip through one more window. As you touch it a third time, it'll tell you to turn the middle knob up, and the auger will start running. Once you turn the middle knob up, the auger starts discharging material. Wait till you have a manageable pile of material there, if, especially if you're shoveling it up. With the scale we're using today, we can dump a little bit more and makes it a little easier to do. So at the end of the drop test for the granular calibration, make sure you try to get all the salt off the machine into the scale so you get a correct weight and let the operator know at the controller what the number is, which happens to be 236 pounds. Once completed with the calibration, then we can do a catch test to verify that it is putting out the proper amount of material. During the catch test, we have to simulate a truck speed. Um, you can do 20 mile an hour, you can do 30 mile an hour, you can do whatever speed you want. But then the seconds um, come into play with that mile per hour. How long do you want to run the thing to simulate a mile? So if you're doing 20 mile an hour to simulate a full mile, you have to do 180 seconds. Um, we can do 30 mile an hour for 120 seconds uh, to simulate your mile. So any combination of that, as long as you're simulating a mile, you will be good. Press our catch test tab. We'll run a rate of 300 pounds per mile. Press our bent arrow, a speed of 30 mile an hour. Then 120 seconds will simulate a full mile. You can do it as a half a mile at uh, 60 seconds, but for this we'll run at 120. Press catch test one more time to get it started. It'll start offloading the material and counting down your seconds. During this time it keeps track of the total that it believes it dropped. And once it has completed its cycle and the time runs out, it'll ask you the weight you dropped. 
Once again, we're looking for this 281 that's being shown. We had asked for 300, but you got to remember you do have a ramp up and a ramp down period. So now we will clean the excess salt out of the chute area and get our final weight. So our final weight is 278. The controller thought it put down 281. We were off by about three pounds. So we will enter the 278. Enter, catch test one more time to save it. And it adjust our weight per revolution down to 5.23 pounds per revolution. Once that is complete, the calibration for the conveyor is complete and it's ready to run. Thank you. So as, as best practices in winter maintenance goes, I would highly encourage you to calibrate all your trucks at the beginning of every winter maintenance season, preferably in late fall. During the season, if you have a major failure of a pump or a hose, something major that's in the hydraulic system or with the head on the CS550, you definitely should recalibrate that machine. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, at the end of this video will be all of mine and Jeff's contact info. And thank you for watching. It's so easy, even a goat can do it. All right, guys, good job. Now get back to work. Hey, where are you going?